All right, guys, I'm not going to start this out with my normal what's up. This is PG Brown, president of Blackstone Labs. Um, but this is, to me, probably the most important video that I've ever put out. And I know you guys that have been following me close remember when I went through my divorce and I've used alcohol. I got myself into the hospital for six days. Somehow I was lucky enough, and I, I usually don't use the word lucky, I like to use the, the word fortunate, but I was lucky enough to come out of that hospital and uh, haven't had a drink since then. And I've been very focused on building this company back to be the best that it could be. Uh, fast forward to 2019, that was the last big Olympia um, before the COVID shutdown. And I was very excited to bring my parents with me to see what we created because we create just the most amazing booths and my mom and dad were just so in awe and uh, they were very proud and they see how I like to go and greet all the fans and I, I speak to every single person that comes and it means so much to me and we laugh and we cry and we have a great time but after each of those nights I was laying in my hotel room in pain and when I went home I told my mom I said I guess maybe I'm turning 40 Pretty soon I said, maybe my mind and my body just aren't on the same page anymore. And maybe I won't be able to do these, you know, nine to five expo days anymore. So I went home and I actually wasn't getting better. And it wasn't until um, right around Christmas, I did a little staycation uh, with Marissa and we were in Miami and we were walking and I got very lightheaded and I had to sit down and then I couldn't get back up. And I started pouring sweat and she was like, is your blood sugar dropping? I'm like, no, there's something else is wrong with me. I barely made it back to the room and then I just slept um, for the next couple days. I came back home and I went to the doctor. Um, now, before I went to the doctor, I thought to myself, well, perhaps I need to donate blood. I'm a big guy, I've had to donate blood you know, numerous times over the years. Let me do this first, then I'll go into the doctor. Maybe it's a high blood pressure thing. Well, when I went to donate blood, they were like, your, your blood pressure is low and your iron is 14. You need to go to the hospital right away. So for those of you who don't know, your iron needs to be about 60 on the low end. So it was so low that I was unable to even be qualified for donated blood. Went into the doctor that day and my blood pressure was 80 over 45, which for a man my size is tremendously low. I actually fainted there and um, I did a bunch of blood work. I said I felt like I had mono because I've had mono in college. Uh, test results came back and she said, well, you have Epstein-Barr virus, which is what causes mono um, and it can stay dormant in your system for years, um, but you need to re uh, rest, chill out, and um, you'll be okay. So I rested for a couple weeks, seemed like it got better, and then we went into the COVID shutdown. So during the COVID shutdown, I got very, very sick again. And when I got very sick, I went to get more blood work done, and I found out that I had mercury poisoning. And it's the craziest thing because I have eaten so much fish my whole life, and I've always thought fish is the best. I love the way it tastes, it's so healthy, it's so good for you. Why not just eat all fish? And my mercury levels were like seven times what they were supposed to be. So I had to go through a process of chelation to remove the mercury from my blood, which makes you very sick. Um, but I do know a lot about that. If anybody wants to talk about that and the procedure. Um, I also learned that you cannot speed up the process because it makes you very nauseous. And so I said, okay, well, I had the Epstein-Barr. I had the mercury. Now I've got to be getting better. And I actually still wasn't getting any better. Now, the world was completely shut down. So no one got to see how frail and sick I was, but I'm gonna show a video here of when the world first opened up and I came out, just so you guys could see how dramatically different I was. And I'm by no means big anymore, but I mean, I was like 200 pounds. I looked like a skeleton. I was very, very weak. Now I started to get very frustrating because during this process I had to keep on getting iron infusions and they couldn't figure out why I was getting the iron infusions so they wanted me to go to see a GI specialist and the GI specialist I did an endoscopy and a colonoscopy 
Um, the iron came up inconclusive, but they did find out I have a massive amount of H. pylori bacteria, which can lead to things like colitis, Crohn's, even cancer. So I had to take a very extensive 30 day protocol for that. And I would say the one positive thing from that was that I don't have heartburn anymore. And at this point I was like, man, it's just one thing after another, you know, when is it going to get better? And I finally felt I was in a good spot and we had got the shark tank gig and I hadn't been working out this whole year. And so I felt, man, shark tank, we can't blow this. I've got 23 days to look the best that I could possibly look. And then we have everybody coming in to shoot the black Friday videos. So just on sheer will and just drive to be the best. I trained myself really, really hard did the Shark Tank videos, and then we shot all the Brawl for It All stuff with Guy and I wrestling, that was a blast. And after that, my body completely shut down. And I think when the adrenaline was gone, I actually set myself back way, way farther. This was when I went to see a uh, infectious disease specialist where after test, after test, after test, and, and let me tell you, some of the, these tests were okay, your heart is failing, you need to go see a cardiologist. Okay, your heart is not failing, but your kidneys are failing, you need to go see a kidney specialist. And each time the anxiety that would ensue after that of just wanting to know what was better, I finally uh, went to an infectious disease specialist that found out that I had chronic active Epstein-Barr, which is a much more rare and aggressive form of Epstein-Barr, and they found it hard to believe that I even got that, but it could have been from my travels and had to be treated much differently because usually you die from that, they told me. And so I was going through a vigorous um, regime of getting IV vitamins and nutrients, high dose vitamin C's, glutathione's, and part of the issue was that my cells were just not absorbing what I was taking in. So I had the right idea, um, but I wasn't taking them in the right way. And at this point, I decided that I needed to just take matters more into my own hands because I wasn't getting the help that I needed. And I wound up becoming a phlebotomist, giving myself my own IVs, which I'll show you guys a clip in here. It freaks a lot of people out, but to rely on people to come to you all the time for that and have to do it all the time. The thing is, the option is if I don't do that, then odds are that I won't live as long. So it got to the point where I was so weak and my memory started getting so bad from the iron being so low that I started having very strange things happening to me. And um, one of the things that I pride myself the most on is my memory and the things that I say. Um, there's better coaches than me, there's better trainers than me, there's better businessmen than me, but I'm a very proud man. And the things that I say, I say with meaning and I have a very, very strong memory. And it finally came out where one of my assistants had said something to my dad. Hey, is there something wrong with PJ? I'm having conversations with him sometimes two or three times the same day as if we haven't had them and he's not remembering at all. And that was when my dad told me that that had happened a number of times. And so I decided to open up to my parents and tell them what I was going through, which I didn't want to go through because I knew that they would freak out, uh, which they did. And I said, I'm doing everything under my, my power to try to, you know, finish this, get to the, get to the root of it. So in around November, I had gotten so weak that I literally couldn't really do anything anymore. I was freezing cold all the time. I would bump into something. I would get a huge bruise. I felt like all I could do was sleep. Um, and simple tasks like even taking out the garbage were impossible for me. This is why I couldn't do cardio Q&A for so long. When I first started getting sick, I was getting so dizzy after the cardio Q&A, my legs and feet would fall asleep and I didn't want to give up because I love being in touch with you guys so much that I just didn't want people to know that there was anything wrong with me. I hate even using the word sick. So finally, when I was at that, that low point, I had this one moment where I just, I looked up at the universe and I said, I have to have this now too. I feel like I put out so much good and I try to help so many people. Why are these things happening to me? And that was the one day that I felt 
sorry for myself. But then I was laying there in bed at night. I thought to myself, you know what? Husbands lose their wives the next day and people get diagnosed with cancer. I'm not going to be a pussy and go out like that. But I told Marissa, I said, um, I would really like you to leave because I'm not getting better and you're young and you're healthy and you have all these great things going for you and I know that you want to help me, but I would never commit suicide because I feel like that's a pussy wake out and I would never do that to my parents because they love me so much, but if I have to stay like this, I just don't want to be alive anymore. I can't remember conversations that I've had. I can't do any of the things that I love and no doctors are being able to help me no matter where I go and I'm meticulous with what I do. So I was bringing blood work to each doctor and I probably saw 20 doctors that year. Finally, I met a doctor named Dr. Zeno who I've done a podcast with and he actually knew who I was. He was a bodybuilding fan and he said, I'd like to look at all your labs and I believe that I can help you. He goes, there's some alternative forms of medicine that I have done myself. I went to the UK to the Hilo Institute and there is some experimental medicine that you can do that I believe that will help you. And I said, I will do anything at this point. I've tried it all. I'm not getting better. I've been sick for over a year. And it was in December when he gave me a protocol of what to do. And it was the happiest that I had been in so long because I finally had some direction. I called my mom and I cried. I called Jen Strobo and I cried. I called Marissa and I cried. I said, I think I finally have a plan that can work. And so I started out with, and he said, you're going to get very sick at first, but I started out with an aggressive protocol of uh, green tea, uh, green coffee enemas every morning, followed by uh, ozone therapy through rectal encephalation. Since all my products were in the gut, I actually had to take a urethral catheter and actually insert it into my rectum. Might be a little bit freaky for people, but when you're that sick, you'll do whatever it takes to get better and do that for one minute every day. He said it's going to be about 10 rough days and then you're going to start feeling yourself getting better. And at that point, I actually did start getting better. And with all of my IV procedures that I do, I started getting stronger and better. And I would say by February, I felt very, very much like myself again. My memory was back being sharp. And my dad had said, like, you seem like so much more like your old self. And I said, I just want to make sure that I have this beat before I come out and tell the world because I don't want to say, hey, I was sick and then fall off again. And so the reason that I wanted to put this video out is because so many people have asked me why cardio Q and A disappeared. Like, why are you skinny? Why are you doing these things? And it's not so much about being skinny, but I missed the cardio Q and A a lot because that's my way of staying in touch with you guys. And I have learned so much through this process that I know that I can help a lot of people. And when my doctor wanted to help me, he said, you are a creator. I've watched you for years and you will take this, you will beat it and you will create something special that will help a lot of people. And that has stayed with me through this whole time. And so by the time this video gets out, uh, the next day will be my first cardio Q&A in uh, over a year and a half. And I'm going to show you guys my process back, my training in the gym, and we'll see what happens. A lot of times with people that have had mercury poisoning, it takes them a while to come back with the chronic Epstein-Barr, all these other things that I'm going through, but I would not give up. And so I think the most important message here is you can never give up. You can never give up hope. That's the one thing that I wouldn't do is I wouldn't give up hope and it was very very hard for me to admit that okay the guy that believes he's invincible is actually not even close to invincible anymore but I didn't let my mind falter and although I did admit to you guys I had those times where I was really like why do this anymore I didn't and if anybody's ever in that position that this is the part that's hard for me to say. If 
anyone is ever in that position where they feel that horrible about their life, there are ways that you can figure out. You just have to not give up. And of course, I have a, bit, a, bit, a bigger database of people, but it took me actually having to have Marissa leave and be alone so I could just focus 100% into getting better. And that is when I started getting better. And now I'm the best I've been in a long time. I'm back traveling again and training again and doing the things I love. And I will be back doing the cardio Q and A's and the training and touching with you, touching back with you guys the way that I love. And I appreciate all the support through all this. And now you guys know the truth of why there's been no cardio Q and A for so long. I appreciate everything. And stay tuned, we're going to turn this into a little bit of a reality series because I don't really know what's going to happen either. It's been a long time, but I sure do miss it. I love you all very much. Thank you for listening. Peace out. Bye.